I didn't mean to kill Austin. Actually, I really didn't. I just want to tell y'all, I'll be home soon. Or I'll be Keon. I love my family. These guys are not your average teenagers. They are real Karens who dared to face the law with their full chest. These are the stories of the 17 most dangerous teens who thought they could outsmart the system, but were wrong. From hilarious mishaps to downright bizarre circumstances, these young offenders managed to find themselves in some serious hot water. You would not want to miss a single moment in their reactions to these crazy sentences. We'll be chuckling, gasping, and maybe even shaking our heads in disbelief as we uncover the wild antics and unforgettable punishments that these daring delinquents faced. Number 17. Shondell Jackson We start off with the story of the 19-year-old kid named Shondell Jackson and his buddy Derek Thomas. These two knuckleheads had a bright idea to go rob some poor sap. Well, things went south real quick. They first set their sights on 21-year-old Nathan Potter, a student at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee who was just minding his own business, walking home from a night out. But Shondell, being the clever criminal mastermind that he is, decided to take things up a notch. He pulled out a gun and fired it straight up shooting poor Nathan. Nathan bled in the pool of his own blood till he died. Shondell and Derek were later arrested and charged with murder. Now, you'd think Shondell would have learned his lesson, but nope. When the jury came back and declared him guilty of killing Thomas, the guy had the audacity to turn around and start hurling insults at Nathan's family. But the real kicker is what happened next. When the judge sentenced Shondell to life in prison without parole, he lost his cool. The guy started freaking out, trying to get up from the table, and the cops had to tackle him to the ground and pepper spray him. Meanwhile, Nathan's poor family was just sitting there, clutching each other and crying their eyes out. And then, to top it all off, Shondell's family members started hurling insults at the Potters, like they were the ones who did something wrong. Anyway, long story short, Shondell will be spending the rest of his days behind bars, and Derek, his partner in crime, got a measly 12 years. Guess the judge figured Shondell was the real troublemaker in this whole fiasco. Number 16. Mackenzie Chilla. The name Mackenzie Chilla has become synonymous with a terrifying tale of tragedy and recklessness on the streets. Chilla, who was known by the chilling moniker Hell on Wheels, struck a devastating chain of events that would shake the community of Strongsville to its core. On that fateful day, Chilla, behind the wheel of her unassuming Toyota Camry, crashed directly into the Pitco building, instantly killing her boyfriend Dominic Russo and his friend Davin Flanagan. But this was no mere accident the troubling details that emerged would paint a much darker picture. Investigators uncovered disturbing videos from Russo's phone, revealing a relationship in turmoil, with Chilla verbally abusing and even threatening her boyfriend. Shockingly, she had even gone so far as to threaten to deliberately crash her car while driving with Russo, foreshadowing the tragedy to come. The crash itself seemed to be a calculated act, with Chilla choosing an opportune time and an unfamiliar route suggesting a level of premeditation. And even in the aftermath, Chilla's actions were nothing short of chilling. She callously asked authorities to suspend her license for a decade, displaying a staggering disregard for the lives she had taken. During the trial, Chilla maintained her innocence, claiming to have no recollection of the events leading to the crash. But the prosecutors presented damning evidence, including celebratory TikTok videos Chilla had posted shortly after leaving the hospital revealing a shocking detachment from the severity of her actions. In the end, the verdict was clear. Judge Nancy Margaret Russo, in a scathing statement, described Chilla as a literal hell on wheels, emphasizing that the deaths were not the result of reckless driving, but rather premeditated murder. The sentence was equally severe. Chilla was condemned to two concurrent terms of 15 years to life, a harsh but necessary consequence for the unspeakable tragedy she had unleashed. Number 15. Nicholas Lindsay. In 2011, at the tender age of just 16, Nicholas Lindsay committed a heinous act. He murdered a police officer, David Crawford, in St. Petersburg, Florida. But what made this tragedy all the more unsettling was Nicholas's chilling demeanor during the proceedings that followed. As the courtroom listened in stunned silence, Nicholas Lindsay sat there with a grin on his face. An unnerving display that left the victim's daughter, Amanda, utterly devastated. 
Despite his young age, Nicholas was tried as an adult and sentenced to mandatory life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. But then, a glimmer of hope emerged in the form of a landmark Supreme Court ruling. In 2012, the court's decision in Miller v. Alabama and its companion case, Jackson v. Dobbs, held that such mandatory life sentences for juveniles were unconstitutional. This opened the door for Nicholas to receive a resentencing hearing, where the court was required to consider the mitigating factors of his youth, his troubled upbringing, his mental health struggles, and his potential for rehabilitation. The defense pleaded for a reduced sentence of 40 years, citing these extenuating circumstances. However, the judge was not swayed. Recognizing the gravity of Nicholas's crime and the unrepentant nature of his actions, the judge renewed the life sentence, though with the caveat that he would be eligible for review after 25 years behind bars. Years later in 2017, Nicholas's case was again revisited. And once more, the court concluded that there was insufficient evidence of his rehabilitation to warrant a reduced sentence. At the age of 22, Nicholas Lindsay's life sentence was upheld, a stark reminder that the consequences of his actions would reverberate for decades to come. Number 14. Jennifer Mee. Back in 2007, Jennifer Mee's name first graced the headlines, not for any grand accomplishment, but for a rather peculiar affliction, uncontrollable hiccups. But in 2011, Jennifer's life took a dark, unexpected turn. She found herself embroiled in a tragic crime, charged with the murder of a woman named Shannon Griffin during a robbery attempt. The contrast between her initial fame as the hiccup girl and these grave criminal allegations must have been jarring, shocking the very public who had once followed her medical misadventures with such rapt attention rating as of the 20 most dangerous teens reacting to their sentences. Her defense team argued that Jennifer's diminished mental capacity at the time of the crime should be taken into consideration, but to no avail. The gavel came down, and she was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, a fate one might consider even crueler than a lifetime of hiccups. You have to wonder, what could drive a person from the realm of quirky celebrity to the depths of such heinous acts? Was it the unbearable burden of her affliction? The constant scrutiny? The weight of her newfound notoriety? Or was there something else? Some deeper darkness lurking within her psyche, waiting to emerge? A question that may forever remain unanswered. Number 13. Daunt Wright. What on earth was going through this guy's head standing in front of a court in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with a grin on his face? And why is he there? Well, let's take a look at his background. Jordan C a beloved senior at Pioneer High School and a star football player with dreams of attending Michigan University, had his life tragically cut short. On that fateful day in October 2016, he was found dead from a single gunshot wound to the head. The whole community was in shock. How could such a bright and innocent young man meet such a gruesome end? The investigation led to the arrest of three teenage suspects, Daunt Wright, Delano Gracie, and Jarris Ellison. Fast forward to June 2017, and Dant Wright casually admitted to killing Jordan C. during a robbery gone wrong. No remorse, no regrets. Just a casual confession. Throughout the trial, Dan continued to display a shocking lack of remorse. When it was his turn to address the court, Dant had the nerve to say, I just want to tell you I'll be home soon. I love my family. Thankfully, the judge wasn't having any of it. Dan's lawyer attempted to apologize on his behalf, blaming his actions on emotional challenges and suggesting that his smile might be a display of fear. Nice try, but no one was buying it. In the end, Judge Schwartz handed down a sentence of 23 to 50 years in prison for Dan's gruesome murder of Jordan C. Number 12. Jeremy and Willard. It all started with this guy named Jeremy and his serious beef with his high school Spanish teacher, Noima Graber. She gave him a bad grade that he just couldn't let go of. So, Jeremy teamed up with his buddy Willard, and they hatched this crazy plan to go after Graber. They grabbed a bat like they're some kind of deranged baseball squad, and they start stalking Graber during her daily walks in the park. And then, wham! They brutalized the poor woman, beating her to death right there in the park. The cops got wind of it and launched a full-blown investigation. They worked overtime to gather evidence and built a case against Jeremy and Willard. 
When the trial rolled around, the prosecutors laid out all the evidence against these guys. The court saw how brutal the crime was and knew they've got to send a message. So there's Jeremy, crying his eyes out in the courtroom, apologizing to Graber's family. And the judge, Sean Showers, weighed all sorts of factors. Jeremy's age, the fact that he didn't really grasp how serious it all was, his clean record, and the possibility that he could still be rehabilitated. In the end, the judge sentenced Jeremy to life in prison, but with a chance at parole after 25 years. Number 11. Evan Miller. At just 14 years old, Evan committed a brutal crime in Alabama. He gruesomely flogged a man named Cole Cannon with a bat and then set his trailer ablaze. It was a heinous act, one that would echo through the corridors of the justice system for years to come. The United States Supreme Court would later rule that mandatory life without parole sentences for juveniles were unconstitutional, offering a glimmer of hope for Evan's future. But in 2021, he found himself facing a second life sentence without the possibility of parole. Judge Mark Craig, tasked with this weighty decision, ultimately believed that the severity of Evan's crime outweighed the mitigating factors of his youth and troubled childhood. Pleas for rehabilitation were dismissed, and the judge delivered the harshest of punishments, a life sentence with no chance of parole. And there was Evan, now 32 years old, appearing via video link from his prison cell, his expression etched with a profound sense of regret. A life irrevocably altered, a future snatched away, all because of the irreversible consequences that can stem from a single night of horrific choices. Number 10. Dylan Shoemaker. On March 19, 2013, a terrible thing happened in Springville, New York. Dylan Shoemaker, a 16-year-old boy, was taking care of his girlfriend Ashley Smith's two young sons while she was at work. But when Ashley came home, she found that her older child, Austin, had been murdered. The investigation revealed that Dylan had severely beaten the young boy, leading to his tragic death. During the court proceedings, a tearful Dylan stood before the judge and jury. He apologized to Ashley, saying he never meant to hurt Austin and certainly didn't want him to die. But the jurors didn't believe his apology, and they found Dylan guilty of second-degree murder. At the sentencing, Austin's grandfather, Michael Smith, pleaded with the judge to consider the immense pain felt by their family. Dylan's attorney argued that his difficult upbringing and anger issues had made him unfit to care for the children. However, the judge had to weigh Dylan's circumstances against the potential risk he might pose to the community if released after 15 years. In the end, the severity of the crime took precedence. Dylan was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison, with no chance of parole. It was a tragic outcome for everyone involved, a life forever changed, and a family left to grapple with the lasting pain of losing a child in such a senseless way. This story serves as a stark reminder of how fragile life can be, and how devastating the consequences can be when trust is betrayed and violence erupts. Number 9. Denali Bremer Denali Bremer lived in Anchorage, Alaska, but she wasn't your average Alaskan girl. She had a taste for danger, and a knack for finding herself in the most troublesome situations. While surfing the internet, Denali stumbled upon an online message from a mysterious character who went by the name of Tyler. Tyler, who claimed to hail from the faraway land of Indiana, had a wild proposition for Denali. He promised her a fortune, several million dollars to be exact if she would just do him a tiny favor. Kidnap and murder a certain Cynthia Hoffman. Denali, being the thrill-seeker that she was, couldn't resist the allure of fast cash. She quickly devised a plan that would make any Hollywood heist movie proud. She lured Cynthia into a hike through Thunderbird Falls, a scenic spot known for its breathtaking beauty and apparently its dark secrets. As Denali and her accomplices ventured into the Alaskan wilderness, they bound poor Cynthia with duct tape. It was like a twisted game of hide and seek, but with way higher stakes. And just when you thought things couldn't get any stranger, they decided to document the whole ordeal. Yes, folks, they turned their criminal escapade into a real-life episode of crime scene selfies. However, Denali has no idea that the authorities were hot on her trail. The Anchorage Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation joined forces to solve this mind-boggling case. Finally, 
the day of reckoning arrived. Denali stood before Anchorage Superior Court Judge Andrew Peterson, ready to face the music. She pleaded guilty to the charges, admitting to the wild and wacky tale that had unfolded. She was slammed a total of 99 years in prison sentence. Number 8. Brenda Ann Spencer Next up is the story of Brenda Ann Spencer, a deeply troubled 16-year-old who would go down in history for committing one of the most horrific acts of violence in American history. On January 29, 1979, Brenda opened fire on an unsuspecting elementary school in San Diego, California, using a rifle her own father had gifted her for Christmas. The shooting resulted in the deaths of two adults and the injury of eight children, along with a police officer. But Brenda's actions didn't end there. When later questioned about her motives, she uttered the infamous words that would chill the nation to its core. I don't like Mondays. This act of senseless violence would not only shock the public, but also prompt crucial discussions about the interplay between mental health and gun violence in America. Sadly, despite this tragedy serving as a wake-up call, the country has failed to make any meaningful progress on this issue. The situation has only worsened, with the number of guns in circulation tripling the population, and gun violence now being the leading cause of death among children. Number 7. Terence Andrus Back in 2008, when he was just 20 years old, Terence Andres was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. It all started during a failed carjacking, when Terence, under the influence of PCP-laced marijuana, took the lives of Avelina Diaz and an innocent bystander named Kim Fang Vu Bui. Terence's case made its way to the United States Supreme Court, but the court found Terence's counsel ineffective for not properly investigating and challenging the state's case against him. It was a series of specific failures that undermined his defense. However, despite the Supreme Court's ruling, a Texas court openly defied their opinion and reinstated Terence's death sentence. The Texas court argued that Terence hadn't proven prejudice, meaning he hadn't shown that the ineffective counsel had a significant impact on the outcome of his trial. They disagreed with the Supreme Court's determinations and rejected their findings, leading them to deny Terence the relief he sought. It's a fascinating and controversial case, with the highest court in the land finding the defense counsel deficient, only to be openly defied by a state court. Number 6. Candrea Cook This is truly an unbelievable story. Candrea Cook, an 18-year-old student from Daytona Beach High School, has managed to overturn a previous 20-year prison sentence for carjacking and battery charges. When Candrea was just 10 years old, she was involved in not one, but two separate carjacking incidents, along with her then-boyfriend, Kendrick Bass. The pair were accused of using a dating app to lure a man and his friend to South Daytona, where they then attempted to carjack them. During the attack, Kendrick even shot the man, though he miraculously survived. The initial sentencing of Candria Cook in 2017 gained widespread attention on social media when she was given an incredible 20-year prison term. Footage from the courtroom showed her mother's sheer horror and anguish upon hearing the sentence. <laughs> Candrea herself broke down completely, having to be physically carried from the courtroom after apparently losing consciousness. However, one year later, the circuit judge Ma Foxman allowed Candrea to withdraw her original plea and overturn the sentencing. The judge cited a supposed miscommunication between Candrea and her assistant public defender Frank Scott as the reasoning behind this decision. At Candria's second sentencing, the atmosphere was markedly different. Gone were the emotional outbursts and the need to physically remove her from the courtroom. Candria now knew exactly what to expect and appeared almost stoic in the face of her punishment. The new sentence handed down is equally chilling. 11 years in prison, coupled with 20 years of probation to be served concurrently while incarcerated. This means that even when Candria is eventually released, she will remain under the watchful eye of the justice system for decades to come. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. Peering into the pixels of this tattooed beauty, one would only wonder what such a pretty damsel basking in her teenage ebullience could be doing with those unending chains strapped around her neck. Her face tells a very grievous story about the moment in the courtroom. Her eyes turning bloody showed the intensity of her sentence, she'd be sitting on that electrocution seat to breathe her last. 
It's really so painful that soon the world will be mourning her demise even after those pitiful reactions before her judgment. It's just one out of the 20 most dangerous teens reacting to their sentences ever witnessed. But what happens when other teens sitting on the same seat set the courtroom on fire with their weird reactions? As we uncover their stories, tell us in the comment section what you think about them. Number 5. David Anthony Parga The night of October 31, 2006, was meant to be a festive occasion for Leland Washington, a promising college student, as he attended a Halloween party with his friends. Little did they know, the seemingly innocuous gathering was organized by a notorious gang, a fact that would soon turn their world upside down. As the party wore on, an argument broke out, and Leland and his friends were instructed to leave. Hoping to avoid any further confrontation, they complied and departed the premises. However, later that evening, thinking the situation had de-escalated, they foolishly decided to return to the party. David Anthony Parga, a member of the very gang hosting the event, saw their return as a blatant act of disrespect. He confronted the unsuspecting Leland, who had played no part in the earlier altercation. In a senseless burst of violence, Parga pulled out a gun and mercilessly shot Leland four times. Just like that, Leland's dreams, his promising future, were abruptly shattered. Instead of seeking help, the callous Parga attempted to cover up his heinous crime. But Leland's loyal friends refused to abandon him. They rushed him to a nearby police station and then to the hospital, desperately trying to save his life. Tragically, it was too late. Leland Washington could not be saved. Years later, as Parga stood trial for the murder, he chose to represent himself in court, facing the full consequences of his actions. The judge described the killing as nothing short of senseless and foolish, robbing a young man of his bright future. In a final gut-wrenching moment, Parga turned to Leland's grieving mother in the courtroom and offered a sincere apology. He knew that his actions had inflicted a pain that could never be undone and he was sentenced to a staggering 50 years in prison. Number 4. Martins Fuller In May 2021, Martis Fuller received a life sentence for the brutal murder of his high school ex-girlfriend, Kaylee Juga. Kaylee, a popular cheerleader and honor student, lived in Kenosha, Wisconsin with her parents. Meanwhile, Martis, who was also 15 years old at the time, attended the same school as Kaylee and played football as a quarterback. Their relationship took a dark turn, with Martis exerting control over Kaylee through sexual and physical assault. After being together for only two months, Kaylee reached her breaking point and decided to end the toxic relationship. She reported Martis to the school authorities, which resulted in his expulsion. Losing everything, his education, the love of his life, and even respect on social media, Martis became consumed by anger. With a feeling of having nothing to lose, Martis began plotting Kaylee's murder. On May 9, 2019, he broke into Kaylee's home in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where she and her mother, Stephanie Juga, were packing for a camping trip. Martis shot Kaylee five times, killing her and injuring Stephanie. After the incident, Martis surrendered to the police. The community was terrified, and there were calls for action to address gun violence. Martis was charged with murder, attempted murder, and burglary. He pleaded not guilty but was tried as an adult. Throughout the trial, emotional testimonies were given, and Martis showed remorse at times. The jury found him guilty of first-degree intentional homicide. In the end, Martis received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Number 3. Lee Rios In February 2018, two individuals from Texas were convicted for the murder of a man from Metro Atlanta. This tragic incident highlighted yet another senseless and irrational act of violence. The events unfolded on May 1, 2017, when Vincente Cruz, a 44-year-old resident of Ostel, mysteriously disappeared after a meeting related to his car advertised on Craigslist. Concerns grew as no one knew his whereabouts. Eventually, on May 22, 2017, authorities discovered Cruz's lifeless body hidden in the bushes. The community was left wondering what had happened to Mr. Cruz. After months of thorough investigation, the FBI revealed that Gilbert George Moran had a connection to Cruz's death. They also uncovered the involvement of another individual, Lee Rios. It was discovered that Rios had killed Cruz due to a drug deal gone wrong. 
During their meeting, Cruz initially brought a friend along, but later asked the friend to leave, saying that the prospective buyer, Lee Rios, needed some time to examine the truck. He promised to contact her afterward, but the call never came. The missing vehicle was eventually found abandoned in a motel parking lot, with Cruz's blood inside. Rios chose not to disclose the details of what happened that day, or the reasons behind why he killed Cruz. However, he was sentenced to spend the rest of his life behind bars. Throughout the sentencing process, Rios remained stoic, showing no emotional cues. After the sentence was read out, he cooperated with deputies and walked out of the court. Number 2. Jared Kano The case of Jared Kano, a promising young man from Tampa, Florida, stands as a tragic lesson to the devastating consequences that can unfold when a vulnerable mind succumbs to the lure of violence. At just 16 years old, Jared found himself facing a staggering 15-year prison sentence for plotting a bomb attack at Freedom High School. His attorney had pleaded for a more lenient approach, requesting juvenile sanctions and rehabilitation in a mental health treatment program. But in the end, Circuit Judge Kimpel Fernandez determined that the gravity of the situation demanded an adult sentence. It was a difficult decision for the judge, who had to carefully weigh whether Jared was truly intent on carrying out the attack, or if he was simply a confused, troubled boy making empty threats. Ultimately, the judge concluded that the threat was real, and the consequences could not be ignored. Jared's attorney, Canela Senor, expressed surprise at the harshness of the sentence, noting that in similar cases, judges often seek out additional information, such as psychiatric reports or polygraph tests, before rendering their verdict. The possibility of an appeal in the Second District Court of Appeal was also mentioned, as Canela Senor disputed the judge's decision not to dismiss Jared's most serious charges. Even though Jared never directly threatened anyone, the charges he faced were nonetheless severe. He was accused of threatening to discharge a destructive device, as well as attempting to make, possess, throw, place, or discharge a destructive device with the intent to harm. The details of Jared's plans, kept hidden in his room, were known to only one friend, who ultimately made the courageous decision to notify the authorities. This act, while undoubtedly difficult, may have prevented a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. Number 1. Alexis Rogers Alexis Rogers, a 19-year-old woman, was involved in a deadly road rage shooting case. During a hearing to determine if she would remain in custody until trial, her attorneys argued that the incident was not her fault. Alexis entered the courtroom crying and continued to cry throughout the proceedings. According to deputies, Alexis was driving a black Mercedes in the South Valley on the night of March 20th when the driver of a Dodge Challenger made a left turn in front of her and then returned to the same course. This led to an altercation and Alexis allegedly chased after the Dodge. During the confrontation, her passenger, 16-year-old Domin Luna, pulled out a gun and shot into the other car, resulting in the death of 16-year-old Efren Arty. After the shooting, Alexis and Luna fled together, traveling to Texas, Nevada, and Colorado. During an interview with a detective, Alexis explained that she didn't come forward after the murder because she claimed to be scared of Luna, alleging that he had been physically abusive towards her. She also mentioned that she was under the influence of the anti-anxiety drug Xanax on the night of the incident. The pre-trial detention hearing was postponed until the following week to allow Alexis's new lawyer to familiarize themselves with the case. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.